Yes, folks, Joshua Green of Green Transport in Taupo was not convicted of obstructing a police officer at the scene of a traffic accident on the Taupo Napier Highway because he is Maori. I want to introduce you to Joshua Green. Now, Joshua Green owns a trucking company in Taupo. Tu Taupo. I think it's got it's got a, a um. They've they've changed the names up in the North Island. You've got Macrons over everything now, so there's a there's a Macron over the O. So I think, and somebody will tell me if I'm right or wrong. Particularly who lives in Taupo, I think it's Taupo. Taupo. Is that right? It's a sort of long ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, so somebody will tell me right. And toe is obviously toe, toe pool. Anyhow, we just used to know as Taupo, and I'm not going to change the um, ignorance of 60 years by just suddenly deciding to embrace the Maori language. Um, anyhow, there we, did I say that out loud? No, of course I didn't. Thank God for that. Um, anyhow, um, he owns this trucking group, and, and he actually did something really stupid. One of his drivers got involved in an altercation, or one of his truck drivers got involved in an altercation with a ute. Um, it wasn't personal, it appears, but they bashed into each other and they ended up in having a road accident on the Napier Taupo Road. Um, now, if you know the Napier Taupo Road, it's not too bad now, um, but it, it, it ended up its own controversy a year ago. In fact, a year ago, I would have been interviewing the Mayor of Hastings about that, and that was that they were seeking to impose throughout the, almost the entire route from Napier to Taupo, which is, I think, about 90 miles, so what would that be, about 130, 140k, um, an 80-kilometre-hour speed limit, which the government has just got rid of um, and said, no, 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 we have the nanny state here, and so it's reimposed the open speed limit, or the 100k speed limit, anyhow, on that particular road. Anyhow, on this particular road, Mr Green uh, and one of his trucks comes into altercation with a ute, uh, there's an accident, and Mr. Green decides at 50 years of age, the owner of Green, and the reason why I'm saying all these names, the reason of Green Transport is he drives there. Uh, Mr. Green makes a dick of himself, uh, does Josh Stewart Green. Um, so much of a dick of himself that he gets arrested um, at the scene for uh, obstructing a police officer in the execution of his duty. He gets arraigned in front of a, a judge, uh, a district court judge, um, Mr Green says that he wasn't obstructing him and he even makes a complaint to the Independent Police Complaints Authority about the conduct of the police. But at the end of the day, Joshua Green is still a dickhead and he gets convicted. Um, he is convicted by the judge in the district court. Um, his name, Judge Hollister Jones. Now, just remember in this particular story, Judge Hollister Jones is the goody judge. Okay, so we're going to run into um, a couple of judges' names. Judge Hollister Jones, hyphenated, he's the goody. He's probably an ex-ringy, actually. Um, and then, a name like that, and then, incredibly, instead of accepting that he's been convicted of obstructing a, a, a policeman in the course of his duties, um, making a dick of himself at the accident scene, getting in the way of the police, even after he's been told not to, taking photos of the ute while people are still getting extracted from it, that sort of thing, you know, just a complete moron. Um, so after he's discharged, after he's convicted of that and he's fined $500, which doesn't seem particularly excessive to me, and he's launched his complaint to the Independent Police Complaints Authority about the dreadful police, which is not upheld, surprise, surprise, Mr. Green decides from Green Transport to appeal his particular conviction. And um, he appears before the bad judge, Justice Peter Andrew, in the High Court at Rotorua last month. And in the last 24 hours, Judge Peter Andrew and the High Court at Rotorua has released <coughs> his um, a judgment uh, in connection with the appeal appeal that was opposed by um, uh, by the police. All right, now, in his judgment, and this is really quite important, and this is all that is wrong with New Zealand. Um, in his judgment, uh, Justice Andrews says there's no merit in the argument that Green had not obstructed the senior constable. So the High Court judge, Justice Andrew, says that, yep, he was a dickhead. 
he did get in the way of the police. He was deliberately obstructing them uh, from doing going about their job. In the wake of a relatively serious accident, um, he did everything that uh, the police accused him of. Right. So far, so good. But then the judge heard the, and the fact that the Greens' appeal um, was all about actually him being Maori. Mm. And here we go. Here we go into our descent into the logical maelstrom, which is New Zealand in 2024 and the New Zealand court system. Basically, Mr Green's appeal was based not on him being a dickhead, because everybody agreed, except Mr Green apparently, that he was. It was that Mr Green is a Maori. Uh-huh. Cool. Yeah. And if Mr Green was convicted of this offence, of which he apparently is guilty, he would suffer because he's Maori and it would diminish, these are not my words, it would diminish his mana. Okay? Now, you'd and I would think, uh-huh. And when the district court judge heard that judge, this is the good judge, Judge Hollister Jones, he went, whoop de doo um, That's what happens when you get convicted of something. It diminishes the murder of everybody. So whether you caught drink driving or being a dickhead at an accident scene like this dude, or, you know, stealing a car or a bike or something like that, or $39 worth of goodies from Woolworths, of course it's going to diminish your mana. That's the consequence of you committing an illegal action. Mm. No, 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 Mr Green's lawyer and Mr Green said, no, 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 but we're a special case. We're Maori. Oh, tell me how this works, says Justice Andrew. Well, Mr Green was a kamatua. Now, he's only, he's 50 years of age, okay? He's, he's 50 years of age. But apparently, uh, according to um, the, uh, Mr. Green's defence, Mr. Green was a kamatoa and a leader within Ngāti Tuwharitoa, which I think is the tribe around, around Taupo. Um, he was described by the chair of the Tuwharitoa Māori Trust Board, John Bashara, who I must declare I know, as a great leader in our community. Um, he was the director of the Central North Island Wood Council. Oh, my God. And he was an elected trustee for many La Maori land trusts. And his company, Green Transport Limited, was a strong supporter of local community sports clubs. But it wasn't that that got Mr Green... Well, I'll take you to that in a second. It was that Mr Bashara then went on to say, and this is Mr Bashara the chair of the Tuwharitoa Māori Trust Board, that if he was convicted, that from a Māori perspective, for karma, for karma, it's got an A, um, a, another one of those Macrons over the last A, for karma, shame, embarrassment and loss of mana is a very real and deep burden and or penalty for a Māori person to carry and is a very real consequence of a conviction. And on the basis of that application from Mr Bashara of Tuwharitoa Māori Trust Board, basically, Justice Andrew said, I find that the consequences of a conviction on Mr Green, and in particular the impact on his mana, would be significant. So, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to strike out the conviction and I'm going to discharge you without conviction. And then, just as Mr. Green is heading for the pub with a big smile on his face, Justice Andrew almost calls after him and says, a discharge without conviction. These are not my words. These are Justice Green's. Uh, sorry, Justice Andrew's. A discharge without conviction can serve to restore or prevent the loss of Mr. Green's mana. Wow, so it appears only Maori have mana. I couldn't make this up if 
I tried. This is, um, without question, racist practice and racial preference from the New Zealand legal system as now being practiced by the High Court of this country. No one else except a Maori leader could get away with what Monster Green has done. He has committed a criminal act. He's made a dickhead of himself. He's interfered in a, um, an investigation and the rescue of people are caught up in an accident. He's been a complete moron. And I'm actually raising this because I think there is a program and shame that should attend Joshua Green of Green Transport in Taupo. And, and, and it's, it's stunning that this man now has been treated in such a way and with such racial preference by the High Court of New Zealand. I'm not talking about by stuff. I'm not talking about by, oh, I don't know, Radio New Zealand News. I'm not talking about all those wokesters that might be putting together tonight's news bulletin for TV and Z News. No, 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 no. I'm not even talking about them. I'm talking about something that's meant to be blind in terms of its partiality, that's meant to be just in terms of the court um, sentences that it, it displays, and fair irrespective of who turns before, up before it. In other words, I'm talking about the New Zealand court slash legal system. We rely upon that to being the, our bulwark, the rule of law for democracy in this country. Yeah, exactly. Democracy requires a neutral, non-race-based legal system. And that video shows that New Zealand doesn't have one. New Zealand appears to be heading in the, towards the uh, same direction as um, apartheid system that South Africa had, except controlled by brown people. 